And so 95% of the radioactive particles in the air when it's snowing are collected on the snowflakes. So in mountain areas where our water supplies come from is where the highest rain out and snow out of radiation occurs. So it can be ra radioactive up by Sacramento, um, up in the mountains. The, uh, there was a, an operating nuclear reactor in, in Sacramento, and 95% of the emissions ended up in the Sierras, which supplies all the drinking water for the Bay Area, and it also go down, goes down to Los Angeles, and it's used for irrigating our food and for dairies and so you see, uh, radiation can end up anywhere, but inevitably it ends up in our bodies. And they just pump that radiation into the ground and say, well, it disappeared. This is where the San Onofre nuclear power plant is in Southern California, and it Downwind from that nuclear power plant is one of the two largest dairy areas in California. Dairy products and drinking water are the two main pathways for radiation into the body. This is where Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant is in San Luis Obispo, north of Los Angeles. This is the San Francisco Bay Area, and you can see that the Livermore Nuclear Weapons Lab, the Lawrence Berkeley Lab, the UC Berkeley campus, the uh, secret Navy Radiation Research Lab at Hunters Point Naval Shipyard has contaminated that whole region. This is where the Humboldt reactor is in Northern California, and the Humboldt reactor was the first commercially operated GE reactor in the United States. And it had horrific emissions. It contaminated the woods, the trees, the children, the food, the drinking water, the whole environment. And it is now genetic in the population that lives there, the damage from that reactor. So what we have here is this is the global contamination of bomb testing material. And you can see that in the northern hemisphere, it's in the same latitude as the nuclear bomb tests. And the highest rates of diabetes in the southern hemisphere are in the, it's in the latitude where the British and the French did bomb testing. And you can even see the dilution effect that rain out over the Atlantic has by the time it reaches the tip of Africa. It's much less. And look at Africa. That has the lowest diabetes rates in the world. How come black Americans, African Americans, have the highest diabetes in the United States? And this proves it. This is. Um, Harlem up on the top and Queens and the Bronx and all those areas of New York City are drinking the same drinking water but something is affecting the poor communities and what we found out from baby teeth and the state milk boards after Chernobyl is that the state milk boards are shipping the most contaminated milk and dairy products from reactors around dairies, I'm sorry, from dairies near nuclear reactors. And the government is shipping all that contaminated milk into inner city black communities and it goes into the mom and pop grocery stores. So here we have up in the Columbia River, the chemical effects are being expressed of radiation, especially uranium, has estrogen and hormone disruptors. And what is happening in the human population as well as the animal population, whatever is happening in the animal population is happening in the human population too. 
And what happens with exposure of male fish to radiation water, contaminated water, is that the estrogen and hormone effects change the male fish one, once they hatch or they're born into female fish. So in the Columbia River, very early on, it was reported that in salmon populations, the female population was expanding, but the male population was shrinking. I made a graph of the, uh, Los, from the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, 1998, 99 to 2010, they have been measuring uranium in the drinking water in Los Angeles. And what I discovered when I graphed it is that there are very elevated levels of uranium in the LA drinking water correlated with all the battles in Iraq and Afghanistan and Yugoslavia. And what's happening in the schools in Los Angeles is that the, the little boys are disappearing. The classrooms are full of more and more girls and fewer and fewer boys. The amount of nuclear pollution that has been introduced into the atmosphere since 1945, since Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Most of it is depleted uranium. And, um, and it is a hormone and estrogen disruptor. So it is changing the sexuality, the sexual expression, and the fertility of all the young people around the world and the that were exposed in utero or even after birth to this global nuclear pollution and it is feminizing the males and de and mass masculinating uh, it's the masculinization of females in the black communities in Oakland the city of Oakland um, they have added new chemicals to the municipal drinking water uh, that give it a very bad taste. And that has not happened in the uh, white communities or the affluent areas. Uh, they are also pumping uh, ozone, which rolls along the ground, and it's very, very toxic to living things. Um, they're, they're pumping that out into the poor black communities in East Oakland around the Oracle Sports Stadium where the 49ers play. And uh, the Oakland days, I'm, I'm sorry. It's a huge football st stadium for the whole uh, East Bay. And the ozone where it's... Um, being pumped into the black neighborhoods, you can tell where it is because birds are dying in the bushes and screaming and flapping and they're in horrible pain until they finally die. Uh, so that's sort of the canary in the gold mine telling us uh, where that stuff is, is being pumped around. And they're using some fluid dynamics method of heating up the air uh, so that it makes um, high pressure fences that you can't see so it doesn't flow anywhere where they don't want it to um, be uh, active. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's frightening, it's very frightening Alfred. This is unprecedented in US history and it's not going to get better and this will go on to other countries as well. So now I'm going to talk about diseases related to radiation exposure. And what happened is, I, I'm a geoscientist and I understand earth processes and circulation and cycles and so forth. And nowhere in the United States officially do they ever link disease to the environment because that would endanger the nuclear weapons program. And I went to Japan and I got the vital statistics of Japan. Now in every country, 
the vital statistics are collected, but they're just piles of numbers, which who would ever understand unless you're an epidemiologist or you get lucky and somebody shows you how to do it. They, they, um, they never graph them. So I got the death from diabetes uh, in Japan. This is for all ages and all sexes. What you see is that uh, after the 50-year-olds, the, for 40 and 50 and younger, the um, diabetes rates are very low because people have very healthy immune systems. But for the older people, as you go 10 years older, 10 years older, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the effects of diabetes death increase more and more with each 10 years. And that's because people have damaged immune systems, they have other disease uh, problems, and they're weaker. So depleted uranium is actually a depopulation agent, especially for the unborn and the young and the elderly. So with the depleted uranium weapons, the effect of global pollution is depopulation of the youngest and the oldest in populations. It's a great killer, believe me. Oh, we yeah. yeah. So then I said, wait a minute, I want to know more about diabetes. And it just so happened that the New York Times published a 10-page, 10 10-full-page 10 article on diabetes. The nuclear weapons program in the United States cost about two to three billion dollars in today's money. That's the Manhattan Project and the nu nuclear weapons program. The cost of diabetes to the U.S. government in 2010 was $350 billion, and it's going up every year. And guess who the decision makers are who decide what weapons they'll use? Well, it's the politicians. And guess who owns the pharma pharmaceutical companies? It's Cheney and Bush and Rumsfeld and people like that. So they're making the decision to use genocidal weapons and profiting and then they're making us sick if we, do, if we live, and they make more profits on the pharmaceuticals which they're selling to us. Disaster capitalism. Are you going to talk about